Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thought I would start another video here where I'll show you some of the new acquisitions I've gotten. We're talking about both Blu-ray and regular DVD here. Uh, to start with, the latest Quentin Tarantino movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, not one of my favorites of Tarantino's movies, actually. I didn't like it as much as some of his earlier stuff, but I liked it enough to own it. So I picked it up on Blu-ray. Currently, right now, I'm going through the Godfather saga. I've watched Godfather 1, I've watched Godfather 2. I've seen all the Godfather movies before, uh, but I haven't seen 3 in a long time. But uh, I was browsing around the other day, and I decided to try this out at some point. I don't know when I'll get to it. But it's the newly released Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. And uh, this is a, the director, Francis Ford Coppola, trying to rework the footage again, trying to save this movie because it's got such a bad reputation, I'm guessing. So he tries re-editing things, playing around with the ending a little bit, you know, and trying to make it a little bit more enjoyable, I suppose. We'll see how it goes. I want to compare this to the original Godfather, Godfather 3. I don't know. I can't believe I didn't have this film in my collection, but I've had it in my collection in past years, but uh, currently, no, I must have gotten rid of it. I had it on DVD, now I got it on Blu-ray, and it's a lousy cover. Great film, but a lousy cover, and it's none other than the classic 1939 Wizard of Oz. Look at this poor cover. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, I think it's what they call a steel book, right? I mean, that's the front. I mean, there's no Tin Man, no Scarecrow, no Cowardly Lion. Look at the back. <laughs> I don't know. It looks good like that anyway when you see it on the, the shelf. And, yeah. It opens up. And... What I don't understand about this particular release is it came with cellophane on it. It said it was the 80th anniversary edition. And then when I got this and I looked at the disc... It actually said 70th anniversary. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, glad to add uh, the Wizard of Oz to my collection. Okay. Now we go to some horror stuff. All right, the Hammer film, the first one, really, uh, not, not, not officially the first. There had been films before this, but films like the Quatermass Experiment and so forth. But this is the one that really put Hammer on the map and changed history, really, for... Uh, blood in horror films and color and cleavage and all that kind of stuff. It's none other than 1957's uh, The Curse of Frankenstein. And it's so good to be able to have this particular title uh, with the best quality I've ever seen it in. This has been a tough title to get really nicely looking. They, ac they actually include a, a couple of commentaries on here, I believe, and also three versions of the film, different aspect ratios. You can watch it in 1.66, which is my preferred ratio for the Hammer films, 1.66, or you can watch it at 1.85. You can even watch it in open mat, like a square TV uh, image, the way a lot of us grew up with it, in 1.37. So three versions of this film. Something for, something for everybody to pick. Uh, I got a couple of Boris Karloff films here. This is, uh, I'll start with this one. This is really uh, a good film, I think. And it's called Isle of the Dead. This is a Val Luton movie. This is, I'm so glad to have the Val Luton movies upgraded. We've gotten so many of them that came out, like uh, Cat People uh, and Boris Karloff in The Body Snatcher. And now this one, Isle of the Dead, uh, which I won't go into, into a lot of detail about the plot. Let's just say uh, it has to do with a little vampire action kind of later in the film. And the beginning of the film... For the most part, the first half or three quarters has a lot to do with a similarity to what we're in now with the coronavirus pandemic. It has to do with a plague that's kind of going around and everybody has to quarantine and kind of be careful if you don't get sick. Kind of like fits today's times, unfortunately, but highly recommended Val Luton classic. Mostly, you know, for people who like subtlety in their films. There's not a lot of graphic stuff that you, you know it's kind of understated that's how the Val Luton films are okay now <laughs> another Boris Carlo film but totally totally uh in a different category altogether it's a real cheap uh nickel and dime uh 
Poverty Row production from Monogram Studios, and it's called The Ape. <laughs> Simply called The Ape. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a short film. It's only 62 minutes long, but yet uh, Karloff gives it his all. I mean, this is, he's really a good performer in this film, considering that the story is ridiculous. It's about a scientist who uh, kills an ape and then uh, dons his ape carcass in order to go out and get victims in order to work on a serum that he's trying to do. A lot of people who are into horror might recognize that storyline from a similarly titled film that came a few years later with Mela Lugosi called The Ape Man. So The Ape is not to be confused with The Ape Man starring Bela Lugosi, although of course it's a very similar kind of story. All right, now we've got some television series to, to start with. TV series on DVD. These are old, old transfers from way back. Uh, I guess this is in the, I don't know if it's the early 2000s. Uh, but anyway, this is Planet of the Apes, the 1974 television series. It only lasted 14 episodes, unfortunately. The complete TV series, such as it is. Uh, I had this before. When it first came out, uh, this is a smaller, more compact kind of, uh, you know, casing here for the DVDs. The one I used to have was one of those wide clamshell cases. That was the original one. Don't have it anymore. Also in that, uh, as you can see here, this Planet of the Apes collection, there are movies and TV show in the back. The TV series is also f figured in this, in the back of that uh, Caesar bust they have the whole TV series, but I actually wanted to try to get it like this with the artwork. So I'm kind of kind of a second buy, if you will. And finally, I have the Star Trek original series, but these are 2004 editions on DVD. These are not the new ones. I know they've done these up. They've remastered them. They made them in gorgeous Blu-ray. They have extra optical effects that they've added to uh, the series. This is as primitive as you can get it. These are from 2004. And they came in these kind of interesting packages, which is a little bit cumbersome, really. But uh, something really cool about it at the same time. Now, I don't know what these are. This is season one. This is season two. And finally, season three. And this is the way I got these used. I bought these used, I should say. And they come out like this, okay? Now, as I say, the quality is nothing to write home about because this is 2004 standard definition DVD, not high def. Uh, but the, I don't know if these are the decoders. I don't know what these things are. Tell me, Star Trek fan. I'm not a Star Trek fanatic, so. But they open up like this. And from there, you have the booklet that comes with it. it tells you about the episodes and so forth. And the actual episodes themselves are here. You have to go through a lot to get to them. But then once you do, there are all the discs. And for the Star Trek original series, I'm, I've never seen the whole series. I mean, I've never been a Trekkie, but every time I try to settle down and watch this, I enjoy it thoroughly. Uh, I've really gotten past multiple times over my life I've gotten past a lot of episodes in the first season but I've never really gone beyond that. I think I've watched some of the second season I know I've seen the Amok Time episode with Spock having to mate I know I know that one and uh, a few of them from season two but anyway I've got a long way to go to really appreciate the original Trek and get all the way through the series so that's it, folks. I thank you for watching with me, and uh, please stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel, please, if you haven't already, and uh, talk to you soon. Take care.